If your EF core queries are slow, it could be a problem with your code. Here are five common mistakes and how to fix them. The first one we'll look at is string columns default to mfar char max. So we've created a number of entities for the DB context. We've got this product entity and this category entity. Notice that they've got a couple of strings, so the product's got a name and a description, and the category has got a name. We've added it to the mydb context by overriding the onModelCreating method and applying the configurations from the assembly and getting the assembly from the mydb context. So these are the entity type configurations. We've set one up for the product and the category. That means we can now add the migration to EF Core. So we go to Tools, New Get Package Manager, and Package Manager Console. We'll call Add hyphen Migration, and we'll call it Add Entities. So this has created the migration. Notice though that it's mfar char max for the string properties. So we've got one for the category name. And if we go down to product, it's also been set in the name and the description. What do you think will happen when we update the database? Let's find out. So we call update hyphen database. It successfully created the database, but as expected, each of the string columns are set as mfar char max. So for the category name, and also for the product name and the description. This is bad because mfar char max columns can't be indexed efficiently, causing slower queries. So what's the solution? The solution is to add max lengths to properties. So we do it on the product, we call builder.property, we'll get the name first, and we'll specify the maximum length of 100 characters. Then we'll do the same for the description. So we'll specify the maximum length for that as a thousand characters. We'll do the same for the category name as well. We'll specify that the category name has a maximum of a hundred characters. Let's now add a new migration and we'll call it add entities with max length. So this has created a new migration and it's altering the columns and specifying the max length for each of them. So we've got it for the name and the description in the product, and also for the name in the category. What do you think will happen now when we update the database? We'll call update hyphen database. Now the string columns have maximum lengths assigned to them. So that's the first problem resolved. Next one we'll have a look at is querying full entities. So we've got this query where we're calling our DB context. We're calling the product's DB set and getting a single record based on an ID. We've got this product's controller where we're calling that method. Let's now run it and see what happens. Let's try it out. Let's add an ID of one. So it's returned the entity. Notice though that it's returning all the properties from the product entity. How do you think the SQL query will look? Well, if we have a look in the console application, it is literally specifying each column name from the product table. A better solution is to return the columns that you need, which will lead to less data and hopefully faster queries. And here's how you do that. So we're going to create a new class and we'll call it product listing DTO. In there, we just want to specify the ID and the name. So we'll specify those properties. So we'll specify the ID first and then we'll specify the name. Then if we go back into the product repository file and we'll find our query, here we can call the select method and we'll create a new product list in DTO. In there, we'll specify the ID and the name which we can get from the product entity up here. And we need to change the return type as well. So it's a product list in DTO. We need to do it on the interface as well. Let's see if it's going to return just the ID and the name in the query. Let's run that API endpoint again. So this time it's only returned the ID and the name property. And if we have a look at the query now, it's just querying the ID and the name. So there's two of the problems resolved, but what do you think the other ones are? Before we have a look at them, just to let you know that minimal APIs are becoming the default way to create API endpoints and I have a course where you can learn about them. Go to roundthecode.com slash min1. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. 
Let's have a look as to how lazy loading can cause slow EF core queries. Lazy loading is good if you want to load navigation properties on demand. The way you enable it is you install the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Proxy's NuGet package. Then when you add the DB context, you have to specify the use lazy loading proxies extension method. And with all the navigation properties that you want to lazy load, you have to mark them with virtual. But when using lazy loading, you might come across the M plus one problem. This is where you load the full query and then you load a number of small queries after it. So we'll take this example here. We're getting all the products and we're looping through each product. And then we're also getting the category name. What will happen when we execute this query? Well, let's run the application and run the API endpoint. So it's returned our data. So what exactly is the issue here? If we have a look at the console application, it's executing the products and then it's got separate queries for each of the categories. So we've got three separate categories in total. So we've got electronics, book and furniture, but it's executed a separate query for each of them. The solution is to add the navigation property as part of the query. So we'll call the include and we'll get the category. Let's now run this again. So it's returning the same data as before, but importantly, it's only got one query now. It's doing a join for the category on the product table. So that's how you resolve lazy loading problems. What about adding filters after the data is queried? Here we've got a query where we're returning all the products and then we're skipping a certain number of products based on the page and the page size. And then we're just taking the page size and then returning a list. Can you see any issues with this? Well, let's run the application to find out. So we're just going to return five records from the first page. So that seems to be working okay. It's returning five records, but let's have a look at the query. It is literally returning all the products. Why is that? The issue is, is that we're doing the pagination after the query has been executed. So the query will be executed when to list async is called, but we're doing the filtering after it's been called. The solution to this is to move this into the query before the to list async is called. So we move it up there. We don't need this anymore. Let's now run the query again. So let's use the same values as last time, five records on the first page. So it's returned five records, but the query has changed. It's now doing the pagination with SQL Server. And it's the same thing if you're doing filtering by calling the where method. You want to do it before the to list async is called when the query is executed. So if you wanted to specify a particular product with a weight over 10 kilograms, we want to specify it up here before the to list async is called. So that's returned the product. And SQL Server is doing the filtering for the weight on that product. A common mistake there for developers. What do you think the last one is? When you subscribe, you'll be notified for any new videos that are released on this channel. By default, Entity Framework Core will track entities, which uses additional memory. But you won't need it if your queries are read only. Here's how to disable tracking. We've got this query where we're getting all the products and returning it in a list. To disable tracking, we call as no tracking. Now the advantage with disabling tracking is the fact that we don't use additional memory when we don't need to track the entities. The disadvantage though, is that we can't update any records within it. So we'll demonstrate that. We'll get the first product by calling await context products. We'll disable the tracking and we'll call first async. Then we'll attempt to update the weight to 15.8 kilograms. And then we'll save the changes to the database. Do you think it will update the first product's weight to 15.8 kilograms? Running the endpoint and the first product's weight is still 15.9 kilograms. Let's now remove the as no tracking method and run that again. It's now updated the weight for the first product to 15.8 kilograms. We only have to track entities if we're making changes to them. So there are some of the common mistakes made with EF Core. 
And if you want to learn more about Entity Framework Core, then watch this video next. Let me know in the YouTube comments if there are any mistakes that I missed out in this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.